Today we're going to be trying to code up asteroids in uh, just about an hour or two. I'm going to go ahead and start from my starting code, which is just a simple main with some sort of uh, platform code. And we'll go into that and we'll start up. You can actually get this code for yourself. Uh, I've put it up on my website at brettduville.com and the file is slash wednesdayworkout.html so you can find it there. Um, first thing I like to do whenever I start these games is uh, go ahead and do things like the input. Uh, let's see, what do I have here? Game input, uh, that's not what I want, I want the file. We'll go ahead and add in the keys that we're going we're gonna to need. Um, this is a game from 1979, Asteroids. It's implemented by Ed Log, I believe, for Atari. The old uh, bad Atari that abused its employees rather than the new bad Atari who uses its IP as a cudgel for everybody else in the world. Um, so what do you need to do? You're a triangle in this game and you move around. You can, uh, you can turn left, you can turn right, you can accelerate. Uh, we may get to hyperspace later, but I doubt it. Um, and you can fire, and that's about it. I don't really think there's much else you can do. We'll come back to that if there's other things I think of. Um, and let's go to this. Let me turn off that phone. Okay. Um, let's go and... Let's just switch that out of the window. I'm going to go ahead and just put in the boilerplate code, which is for each of these keys that I want. Um, I'm really terrible these days at the, there we go, at the, uh, at the Windows keys. I work a lot on my Mac. Um, okay, so left, right, and so I'm, I'm kind of, uh, often forgetting that switching control and alt for some reason. Uh, what did I say? Fire, I guess we'll make the, that the space. I can't remember that space or space bar. And then I'm actually going to go ahead and put in a reset. I like to do this sometimes on iterating. I like to be able to reset memory just based on that. Alright, so this is reset. This is fire. So you've all played Asteroids, I assume. Up is Accelerate. Right is uh, Right Turn. Right's Right Turn. And Left Turn. All right, I hope that's just about everything I'm going to need. Uh, oops, did I type Reset? I did not need to do that. OK. OK, good. Now we've got the game going. We will probably not need to uh, rebuild the main executable, which just handles input and stuff like that. Um, let's go ahead and open up the game. So we don't have a game yet. Probably the th first thing we need to do, I always like to start out just by going ahead and creating a game structure. We're going to put everything in. Um, we're going to go ahead and um, I'm going to go ahead and create the player model in here. Uh, it's three points. I'm going to make it four. You'll see why in a minute. Maybe we'll start out and just do that. Um, if not, game data, game memory is initialized, is initialized, or just pressed um, game data reset. I'm going to make a little change here to some of this code that's in here. Um, instead of doing this key state baloney, let's look at... Probably should have done this beforehand. Keys sent. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and do game data uh, input. I'm going to need the game data. Keys. I think that's also an arrow. There we go. Like that. All right. And let's go ahead and put that in there as well. And in here, I'm going to do game update, render data, game data. And let's 
let's go ahead and do that here too. Oops. And let's put the same code in there. So I'm just doing my simple uh, key logic here. I'll probably change this in the base project later. Uh, all right, let's make sure this compiles. Looks good. Uh, oops, that no, does not look good. Can I get a key state? Yeah, keys set. Okay, good. And actually, I actually think we will need uh, one of these. Game update render data, game data, because we're going to want to, you know, when you're holding key down, do stuff. Uh, and we'll go ahead and store that too. Uh, keys state is down. Good. Okay. That's a little simpler to read down here in my sort of main code. Um, let's go ahead now and game state star game state is just equal to game state. We get some memory when we start up the game. Game data game memory memory permanent, I think we call it. Yeah, good. Okay. Let's go ahead and create that thing and then we'll draw it. Uh, you'll see why I added four points in a minute. Um, let's just say game state player model zero equals oh, x equals, let's say uh, this of course is going to be zero. This is all going to be kind of local to the ship. I'm going to move the ship around and rotate it and stuff, but I need to kind of have a, a ship that's rotated on the origin or centered on the origin in order to do that. Uh, we'll go ahead and do that. Um, let's make that. Uh, let's go ahead and do a ship size. Uh, I don't know how big this is going to want to be. Um, probably not that big, but we'll see. And then let's go ahead and put the wings. Model one dot axis. We're going to put this off to the side a little bit. Um, I'm going to use a little bit of known trigonometry here. Trigonometry here. This is uh, square root of three over four uh, times ship size and game state. Except I want that to be minus. I'm going to do the left one. Player model one dot y equals. Let's just make it. Uh, just half of the ship size, good. Uh, and we're going to make this thing symmetric. Um, let's see, here is equals minus game state player model 1.x and game state player model 2.y equals game state player model 2.y. And then I'm going to go ahead and set this back to the same thing. The reason why I like to do these kind of old games and code up this way, and I'll look up at the chat in a moment, is because I often tell students that there's real value in doing so. Um, and yet I've never really seen anybody do that kind of as a streaming thing, just to kind of bang out uh, quick implementations of games, um, classic games. I think there's a lot of value in implementing things that are kind of already designed for you. Um, and so that's kind of what I'm doing here. Okay, let's make sure I didn't screw up anything like that. I certainly did. Uh, B32, okay, great. Don't care about that. Um, I'm missing const F32 ship size equals. And just pressed, just pressed. Ah, okay, you know what? Let's make that a bool. A uh, bool and say return zero is not equal to that and here I don't want those to be points I want those to be real points okay let me see what the chat has to say Brett the stream sign oh goodness gracious I'm so sorry you probably can't see anything that I'm doing how terrible let's get rid of that sorry about that I am in the zone <laughs> Okay, all I've done so far, sorry about that, that was terrible. Um, I made myself a note to remember to, uh, to record this time, and I'm going to have to make a note to uh, also uh, take down any, hey, the stream's going to start 
science. Thank you for pointing that out, those who did. Um, okay, so what did I do? Um, I fiddled with the just pressed, just released is down thing a little bit. Um, I have some stuff. I have an extra space. Um, I have changed this. And I might be just about done. And I'm missing equals here. Yeah, typing away. Okay, good. All right, so we're not drawing that yet. Let's go ahead and do that. Um, let's do... Uh, I'm going to do something like this. Draw line model. Um, game state. Player model. And three. Okay, let's go ahead and add that function. So we're going to just do a little sort of simple vector graphics here. Um, and that's going to be super easy to do. We're just going to have our model and then U32, like vert count, vert count, I guess. And we just need to do a simple GL begin and end pair here. If that's lines. Uh -huh. And then for U32, I equals zero, I is less than vert count plus plus I, and in a moment you'll see why I actually duplicated the last vert in here. I'm going to uh, chill vertex to, we'll do something more complicated in a moment. Uh, hmm. Mm hmm. What do I want to do? What do I want to do? Nah, that's fine. We won't worry about it. Model i uh, dot x and model i dot y. And then we're going to do that again, but we're going to do i plus 1. Uh, whoops. So this means we can just kind of do it without doing lots of if tests or modding against the sort of how many verts we have to wrap around to the end and stuff like that. A little bit simpler, takes a little bit more memory. Um, and let's go ahead and see what we got. Um, these need to be rounded. To, ooh, to U32. I guess I could have, I have a, uh, 32, 32. I'll do that again. Round and round. We're going to do more than this in a moment when we actually get the ship moving. Okay. So we should have a little ship up here in the upper left. Where's my game? Good. We've got part of a ship up there. Doesn't look great. Looks like I probably made a mistake in some of my math setting up the model. Um, I sure did, and good, there we go, part of a ship up there, maybe facing the wrong direction, once, once we have it moved and centered, we'll get that fixed. We're going to need to put this somewhere, uh, let's go ahead and do that, uh, let's do player position, um, oh, we're initializing memory every frame, that's pretty great, and data. Game memory is initialized equals true. Good. Um, let's go ahead and put this in the middle of a real point on point. I happen to have these things. I'm going to go ahead and load up that file so you can see it over there. It's in the common directory. I have my sort of type stuff, which has just got a bunch of little simple utilities for uh, dealing with vectors and things like that. I am uh, that stuff's available to you in that zip file I mentioned. All right, the player position, real point from point. Let's get that from game data. Uh, do we actually pass that in? It does not look like it. I might have to add a little bit to the platform layer. Let's go to that. Let's see what do we got. 
we do not send in the window size. So let's go ahead and send that window size and then in, I don't have that open, so let's uh, find win32 main. We'll go ahead and add that in there. Game update render data window. Window size dot x is window uh, width and game update render data window size size dot y equals window height. Good. We actually are going to have to restart our game to do that. Uh, luckily, we handle that. Okay. Hello, game. Good. Um, right. Good. Of course, all kinds of problems. Uh, good. That looks good. Um, let's go ahead and put that. Um, let's go ahead and do scale that point. Arg. At some point, it's not going to think I want that very much. Uh, just by 0.5f. Uh, huh. I guess I didn't write one of those. Let's go. Let's see. What do I got? Scale. Scale point. Oh, okay. I didn't. Don't have one of those. Really want that. It's kind of dumb that I don't have it. I want one that doesn't, that just scales in place. Kind of silly to even bother passing a copy for that. Okay, and let's go back to the game. Good, okay. So now we should be somewhere in the middle. Let's go ahead and start that game up again. We are not in the middle. Of course, we haven't done anything with the position, so let's go ahead and do that. Um, let's pass. A position now to this thing. So we've got this thing. Let's say where it's going to be. It's going to be at game state player position. Good. And let's add that in here. We don't need to pass this. We can pass this by value. And we will just go ahead and do our uh, translation in place right now. Um, yeah, let's do that. We're not going to want to do this in a short while, but that's fine. And because we're going to want to rotate this thing, this is kind of ugly looking. That's fine. All right, what do we got? Uh, I probably should have put this inside. I think I will do that instead. Okay. Good. Oh, good. Okay, so there, that's in the middle. Let's start right away with making it uh, rotate. I guess let's make it rotate. Um, so we're going to need to keep track of the player's orientation. Good. And uh, we're going to need to pass that in here. And I'm going to go ahead and implement some, uh, some math for you. He's going to start at zero, so that's good. I might have to... Uh, uh, I click in a Y somehow. I do this all the time. I accidentally had to hit Y thinking I need to save. Um, and it's saying, oh, I don't have that. So let's go ahead and add that in. Good. Good. We'll update the player in a little while, but right now we're just going to go ahead and allow him to be oriented if we had one. And then we'll test it um, to see if it works. Uh, so we just compile. Let's make sure it looks good. Uh, we're not doing anything with that orientation yet. Let's go ahead and add a matrix type. To make this sort of easy to do. Uh, let's do matrix 2D 
good for now. I'm just going to make that M00, M01, M10, and M11. I may want to later make that a union or something like that. Um, and then what else do I need? We're going to need to be able to rotate stuff, so let's do that. Uh, rotate uh, point. Uh, let's first do uh, void make rotation matrix uh, 2D, I guess, in case we want to do that someday. Uh, destination, and we want uh, a F32 angle. I do everything in radians because why convert back and forth all the time? Um, we need. And we need F32S equals sine F angle. And they want star m 0 equals C. So um, the I'm just going to do this and I'll tell you why. You have to look this one up and maybe trust me on it. But uh, that is what a, a rotation matrix looks like. You take the angle. Um, and you stick the cosines along the diagonal and around the opposite diagonal you put the sine and the opposite of the sine so that when you multiply it uh, rotate point um, yeah I guess I'll do that uh, I'm gonna pass in matrix and do that <clears throat> Let's see if we can scroll this down a little bit so it's a little easier to see. Everybody see everything? Hey, it's that one guy. Hey, blinded eye, how you doing? Hope everybody can see what I'm doing now. Um, create a result. Um, we're going to do result dot x equals uh, root dot m00 times uh, source dot x plus root dot m01 times source dot y and result dot y equals root m10 times source x plus root m11 times source dot y and return it good okay and then we'll probably add something in a minute that does something a little bit more complicated so now all this work i did over here is probably going to be useless in fact while we're at it uh, let's do, uh, huh, yeah, I'm totally going to want to do something different. That's okay. We'll get to it in a second. Uh, let's, let's actually do this a little bit differently. So what I did before was I kind of baked into my, my model here, sort of the translation of the thing. Um, and I've kind of done this thing here where I'm going, uh, from one to vert count uh, or from zero to vert count. I'm actually going to switch that because I'm going to be doing some math that's uh, twice and I don't really want to pay for it all the time. Um, so let's create um, let's create now a uh, prior point which is equal to the transform of our of a, of a real position. We're going to need this matrix. So let's make our matrix matrix 2D uh, rotate equals uh, now we do uh, make rotation matrix 2D and rotate and then we do orientation is just that and we're going to transform uh, that whole thing uh, we're going to create a point from point point from real point so this transform is going to return that thing we'll get to that in a sec uh, we're going to transform uh, let's see model zero by this matrix and we're going to add in this position good excellent and all this stuff will make sense uh, in a moment so let's go ahead and write that transform so we got a real point uh, transform. Uh, I probably should have made that 2D, but here we are. Here we are. 
matrix 2D star rotation, and we've got uh, a real point, which is our translation. Go ahead and throw questions at me if you want. Uh, I'm working on uh, implementing asteroids in a couple hours here, Blinded Eye. I'm trying to do it. I'm half hour in, and I'm not even moving my ship yet, so I better, uh, I better get cracking. Um, first, we're going to do real point results. Results uh, is equal to rotate point uh, source by rot. Good. We're going to do result. Let's see. Add two point. To the results, we're going to add our translation. So you kind of, if you're rotating anything, you want to rotate it in its local space and then move it. Um, if you move it first and then you rotate the points, they end up rotating around sort of the origin of your whole system, and they end up in the wrong place. So that's a little, a little, uh, little matrix math for you. Um, you know, in 3D it's the same. It's just that the joints are in 3D. All this math generalizes out to 3D. Asteroids today. Yep, origami. Uh, and then we just return that result, and let's go back over here, and we'll say uh, point next point is equal to, we're going to do the same sort of thing, we're going to transform model i with rotate and position, whoops, position, good, we're going to do geo vertex 2i from prior point, prior point, Y. We're going to do that from there to our next point. And next point and next point. Good. And then we just need to store off the fact that prior point is now equal to next point. Um, M0 left of M00. Oops. Left of M00. Well, let's just do it the way it wants to do it. I should have done it this way in the first place. I think I, when I implemented this earlier in the week, just to make sure I'd be able to do this stuff, make sure I thought about all the things I was going to have to do. Um, let's see, I'm missing, I'm missing the same problem. I've got the same problems here. Let's do that. M like that. I think we're okay now. Uh, boom. Good. All right, so we're still not rotating the thing, but let's make sure what, that we can. Let's rotate the thing by, um, let's go ahead. I'm gonna go ahead and do this. I tend to like to code in the right window for some reason. Let's go ahead and say, uh, game state, player orientation, player orientation equals 1.0F and make that. Good, so it should have turned a little bit. You guys actually get to see that faster than I do. Yeah, I'll turn a little bit to the left. Um, and uh, good, so left is positive, good to know. Sort of makes sense, if you think about it. My X is to the right, um, my Y is down, or, or rather my Y is up. So Z is out of the screen. Uh, it sort of makes sense that I would be curving uh, positive Okay, so that works. I'm going to go ahead and put that in here, uh, just so we have it. Reset. Player orientation is equal to zero. And now let's go ahead and write a little update logic for the player. Uh, update player. Let's just do. Let's just do. We'll pass in our game data because we're going to need the inputs. We're going to need to know what else we're going to need to know. Well, we got the time in game data. We're going to need the game state um, because it's got our player position and orientation in it. I guess that's really all we're going to need to know. And we'll go ahead and do that. Update player. Um, we're going to need some more out of our game structure in a second. Um, in fact, let's go ahead and add that. Uh, game update render. Game update render game data. Uh, game state. Game state. It's not going to do anything for the moment. Uh, let's do 
f32 delta t equals, I find that a little easier to work with than whatever I do here. For unexpected time, is a little bit wordy to type all the time. Um, we're gonna need to know how fast is this thing going? Uh, and we're gonna need to know, is there anything else we're gonna need to know? No, I don't think so. I think that's all we actually need at the moment. Okay, so what do we need to do? If, now we're gonna need to give it some rotational velocity. Rotational bell equals, uh, starts at zero and we're gonna make it, uh, make it something different. Let's go here. So if, if we're pushing the left key down, game data, left turn, then rotational vel, uh, we said left is positive. So we're gonna make that some number. Const F32 rotational velocity, max rotation, uh, I don't know. Um, I should probably make that pi, uh, I don't know. 90 degrees per second maybe, uh, max rotation. And if is down, is down, gain data, right turn, right turn, rotational vel, uh, minus equal max rotation. So you'll be able to push both the buttons at the same time. We'll do the acceleration in a second. Um, the uh, new orientation of the guy is just gonna be player orientation is just gonna add up the rotational velocity times time delta. And then if, and then let's see, I guess if we turn this way up or the frame rate were really bad, game state player orientation is greater than two pi. Um, player orientation minus equals two pi. I haven't defined pi yet, but I'll do that. And let's go ahead and do Player orientation is less than 0.0f. Game state player orientation plus equal to pi. I just want to keep it in the range that sine and cosine like. Um, right. Okay, I don't have pi or two pi. Let's go ahead and put those in there. Const pi equals const f32 pi is equal to. Let's go ahead, I'm just gonna pop open a browser here. Um, I might as well let you all see that. Whoop. Um, pi, good. Uh, I don't want all of that, I just want that part. All right, let's go ahead and put that in there. Uh, great, that is not what I want. I'll put an F after that. And we'll go ahead and do 2 pi. I'll probably move stuff like this into uh, something else. No, Emacs is not a thing amongst the Thesda developers. I know of one other um, who likes it. Um, uh, I actually started using it because I go back and forth uh, between a PC and a Mac. Um, and I don't have a common environment in both. Normally, I, at, back in Bethesda, I mostly worked in Visual Studio which was supported by all our platforms. Good question, but it's just a pain in the neck. Okay, so we should, where's my game? Yeah, there we go, we can totally rotate now. Let's start back to zero. Looks good, looks good. Let's go ahead and, ah, quit the game. Let's go ahead and, yeah, okay, cool. All right, come back to that in a second. Let's go ahead and add some velocity. Um, that was really the cool thing. Let's see. I don't know what the acceleration is going to be. Ex uh, I'll just call it my acceleration equals. I have no idea. 50 pixels per second. That doesn't seem like very much. Maybe 100. Maybe 200. That would mean you cover the screen in I don't know a few seconds. That seems reasonable. Um, okay, so we do game state player velocity 
is just equal to, um, we need to rotate this velocity so that you're going in the direction that you want. Uh, we only actually need to do this if we've got, um, uh, what is that, this accelerate button down? Right, okay. We're gonna have to update the position no matter what, but we need to only update acceleration, and that means the velocity, um, if you're actually holding the key down. So velocity, we'll just make that, let's see, uh, negative one is up, so 0 0.0f and minus max acceleration. Uh, acceleration, we're gonna do, that's not what I want. Excel, we're gonna want to rotate that point. Uh, what did I call that? We need a rotation matrix for that. Um, so let's go ahead and create one of those. Matrix 2D rot. We want to make a new rotation matrix out of the current player angle, because that's the direction in which we're going to uh, apply our acceleration. Uh, so that's just player orientation. And we're going to want, uh, what else are we going to do? We're going to want to rotate rotate point, uh, let's see here, um, I think I did this, rotate point, I need to open that up, I don't remember my type signature here, rotate point, takes a source point and a rotation. I should scroll this up a little bit for you, sorry about that, um, because my camera, my face might be covering it. All right, so we're gonna rotate that point in place basically, like that, and then you are just accelerated by delta time, except I can't do that like that because I don't like op operator uh, overloading. Excel, good, and that will be what we do first. And then add to point, game velocity, uh, game state, player velocity, uh, what are we adding to that? We're adding the acceleration. Good. And then we want to move the player a little bit. We want to say, uh, we want to add to the, we want to scale that. Okay, real point, local velocity, momentary velocity is the uh, game state player velocity. We're going to scale that point by delta time, and then we're just gonna add that into the current state player position. Uh, we're doing pretty well, we're less than 45 minutes, and we should now have uh, the player moving around. Good, let's see how that looks. Um, hmm, no acceleration. I'm gonna have to check that I got accelerate right. It's possible that I just didn't even get that right over there. Game input. Scan code up is the accelerate key. If that key is down, I'm gonna accelerate. Oh, and I added it to the player velocity. That was dumb. And uh, let's just reset. Oh, goodness. We have died. Oh, he probably went off the screen. Um, I'm not handling him going off the screen. Oh, yeah, there, there we go. We got a little asteroid guy moving around. Cool. Cool, cool. All right. He's going to drift off into space because we're not constraining him to the window. Um, the, uh, I guess we'll do that right here. Okay. What do we got here? Blind Eye, Emacs. Jean doesn't use uh, Emacs, does he? Uh, yes, I'm using the hot level, hot swapping uh, on everything I do. Um, I stole that from Handmade Hero. I've used DLLs in the past. Um, yeah. All right. Oh, hey, that should be... Thanks for pointing out that uh, Dad Jokes Cinema. That's actually supposed to be the game. Let me just make sure that OBS picks that up. Uh, game. 
Let's look at the properties of this thing. This is supposed to be the window game. Let's refresh it. Okay, it should be all black. Yeah, it's looking like it's got Emacs in it. That's weird. Weird. Um, hmm. Let's try that. No. I might just take that out. I might just take that out. Yeah, let's, let's take that out for now. Sorry, I thought that was working before. I'm not so good at that. Sorry about that, Dad Joke. You're right, that totally would be cooler. I don't know why that's not working. Um, currently it's black, so it doesn't, it's not that exciting. You're not missing that much. Okay, let's get back to Emacs. Okay, um, I need to constrain these points, uh, the player position, uh, to be something reasonable. So let's go ahead and do that. Um, I think I might just do that um, this way. New player position. I'm going to go ahead and set it to that. I'm going to scale it. This is really doing all the same stuff. I'm going to add into it the old player position. I don't like to write to memory bunches of times. These should be local. Um, Except I don't want that. I want that. And then I'm going to go ahead and uh, if new player is greater than game data window size.x, that is probably yeah, like that. I might actually just go ahead and do that here. Uh, real point window size equals. Uh, real point from point. There's some code that I've already written that you can grab. Um, I just want that to be from game data, window size, like that. And I'm actually going to pass, um, I'll go ahead and pass that in here just so that I don't have to constantly do floating point conversion. And right here, this should be a real point, which is the window size. Good. Okay. All right, that should, you should be able to see that code. How's the font for everybody? Can you guys read that? I might have to play around that with that for next time. Um, all right, so if it's greater than that, we do player position dot x minus equals window size dot x. Basically just normal, normalizing here. Uh, if new player position dot x is less than zero. Good. New player position dot x plus equals window size dot x. Uh, and then we need to do the same thing for y. If it's greater than the window size dot y, then we go ahead and minus equals the window size dot y. And otherwise, if it's less than zero, uh, we can new player position dot y plus equals window size dot y. Good. And then we just need to set that in a uh, new player position. Uh, and uh, we should, yeah, probably took a couple frames to catch up because I was drifting all over space. But we should now be able to kind of fly all over the place. Um, this kind of unforgiving physics was kind of characteristic of uh, of these games. Let's go ahead and get some asteroids drawing and just I'll leave that guy floating around in space. Uh, what do we need to do for an asteroid? Well we need to generate asteroid model. Um, let's go ahead with three sizes of asteroid. Uh, we're gonna need a big asteroid model, a big ass model. We're gonna need a, a medium ass model and yeah, I'll probably play with the acceleration, and we're going to need a little last model, poor little last model. Um, I'm going to make them different numbers of points, uh, 16, so 17. I better actually define that cost, U32, big ass model count, bird count. Big ass model, this one. And I will also do a medium ass, medium ass model. 
Short count, Moel model, plus one, and I'll do a, a little s model for account. Good. And let's go ahead and define those. Let's make it 16. Uh, medium, medium mass model for account, and 12 say, and little s model for account. Let's just say eight. I want to kind of have them have the same amount of chunkiness as they go down in scale. Acceleration, top speed was high. I'm actually not, hmm, that is a good point. That's a good point, Dad Jokes Cinema. We will probably, uh, we'll, we will definitely futz with those numbers. Um, I don't actually even have a top speed uh, in the game at the moment. Um, I think with asteroids, the fact of the matter is, like, let's go ahead and just, just accelerate basically forever here. You know, with asteroids, I feel like if you are going this fast in asteroids, um, death is imminent. You know, so who cares? Like, I mean, this can go basically as fast as you can imagine. Um, so fast that you can see it kind of teleporting through space. Um, anyway, I don't, uh, 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 I think I'll reset. Oh, except I didn't reset player velocity. Let's go ahead and do that. Uh, da, game state. Player velocity dot x equals 0 0.0f and game state. Player velocity dot x equals dot y equals um, good. All right, that's a little bit better. Okay, next. Um, what was I doing? I was going to generate models, generate asteroid models. Uh, we'll figure out how, need, how big those need to be. Um, we can do this more than once. Let's say generate asteroid model. We're going to need it to do it for each of our models, and we're going to need to say how many points. Big ass model with the big ass model vert count. Um, I want to say we're going to want to know how big these things are going to be, and then maybe we're going to. Yeah, let's just start with a radius. Um, big ass radius. And then I'm going to go ahead and do that for each of them. Medium, little, and medium, medium, and little. And a uh, little, and medium. Let's go ahead and figure out how big we want those things to be. Uh, big S, big S radius equals, again, I have no idea. We will tweak these later. Medium S radius, um, let's say, I don't know, 125. And little S model, little S radius equals 75. Now we need to actually generate a model for that. Um, I'm just going to make a circle for starters, and then we'll make a bigger one. All right, so let's go ahead and generate an asteroid model. What did I say this needed? Uh, I need a model, so that's a real point. Where are we going to put it? We're going to go ahead and do some vertex count. Uh, let's just count like that and we need a radius. Good, good. All right. Uh, count plus plus i. And we're just going to do, um, we'll do a little bit more with this in a second. For now, we're just going to make kind of a circle. So uh, we'll just need the cosine and the sine again. Um, let's say uh, F32 curve angle equals zero, and F32 angle stride equals uh, two pi divided by uh, count, 32 count, good. All right, so we're gonna say the current angle, F32S equals the sine of the current angle, and then we're gonna say, the point model 
uh, model i dot x is equal to uh, the radius uh, times cosine and model i dot y is equal to radius times the sine and then we just need to update by the stride good and we're gonna make a model count remember I wanted to close these loops by equals uh, close these loops by putting the start point uh, like that the start point at the end and then let's just make sure that that looks good first of all does any of that compile it does um, let's go ahead and just draw our um, uh, where do we want to put this? Let's put it at uh, uh, just this is temporary. Uh, good, we're going to draw a line model which is at temp, uh, no rotation, uh, the big ass model, and big ass model birth count. Um, Let's just see if that, um, I don't see it. Oh, I need to reset so we actually generate the thing. Good, we've got a circle. Let's go ahead and make sure we've got the other ones too. Oh, God, right. Okay, let's go ahead and put the medium mass model there. And make sure that those look okay. And, uh, and I've made I've made a terrible mistake. Means there we go. It's meat ass. There we go. Um, so we should now. Where's the game? Yeah, there we go. Three little circular uh, asteroids. That's good. We're gonna want to make those kind of a little bit cooler so let's add a little randomness to the the uh, occasion shall we um, I'm just gonna stick some numbers in here not because they matter at all um, but let's go ahead and add a little bit of randomness to how we generate this thing where is generate Defenerate generates asteroid model F32 is some sort of min, and F32 is some sort of max. Um, we need a random float. I don't think I've given you guys any random floats. Um, random, uh, random factor equals random. Let's just say random F32 of min and max. Let's see. Um, it sure doesn't like that, so let's just go ahead and write it for you. F32 random, F32 of F32 min, F32 max. And let's go ahead and um, we're going to go ahead and put that in here too before I forget. I call it random factor. Good. We don't want circular asteroids. That's not good enough for us. Um, I want F32. I want returning the minimum plus uh, the F32 of the value that returns from RAND divided by F32 of the maximum RAND value in C um, times max minus min. That should do what we want. Rand max is not known. Wonder where rand max is defined. Might have to include some crap. Uh, rand max. Is it rand max or max rand? It's in stdlib, looks like. Let's go ahead and include. I must not include stdlib. That's silly. Why isn't it just in math? Okay. Okay, good. And somewhere I added a point F. Good. All right, so let's see if we can get some quick, simple, randomized asteroids. 1.2 and 0.8 was maybe a little bit much. Um, those are also really big ass asteroids. I might want to shrink those down a bit. Okay. Um, 
But we know that we're working and we have some sort of chunky things. We're almost coming up on the hour mark. It is definitely time to get shooting. Let's go ahead and make these things a little bit smaller. Um, 90 and say 50. Just, yeah, that looks a little bit more manageable. Okay. Let's go ahead and add some shooting. Um, we're going to take those out for now. Well, let's put them in the environment, right? That makes sense. Let's go ahead and generate some, uh, some new asteroids. Um, we want to populate uh, a bunch of asteroids uh, in the world. Let's say const u30 initial asteroids. Let's say we want to start off with five. And we want to say um, medium from big. Let's say when they split up. A uh, little from medium. We split it into threes. I think that's basically the way the game worked. And um, we're going to need to actually have some arrays of these things. Um, and we're going to need a little bit of data for those things. So I'm going to go ahead and create a structure for an asteroid. Um, asteroid is what is it? It's going to be a position. And it's going to be an orientation. That's just an F32. And I guess we will also make it move, of course. Uh, real point velocity. I think that's all we want. OK, let's go back to chat, see what you guys are up to. It doesn't seem portable. Is it normal in Windows to explicitly tell the compiler you want an F32 and not a general float? Mm. Good question. I actually define. Um, let's go to BJD types. Um, I actually define here, based on the compiler, uh, these guaranteed types of particular sizes to be um, typed F to 32 and 64 and all that. So those are my own types. Um, so that's why I do that. Microsoft wouldn't care about that. Those are not Microsoft's types. That is true. Microsoft would not care about it. Um, I am trying to do this every week, Azo. Welcome. Uh, so yeah, come back next week. Join us. Um, we're gonna need. What are we gonna need? We're gonna need some asteroids, which are the big ones. Big asteroids, I guess. Initial asteroids. Ah, oh, the spelling. I hate to misspell in my code. Um, and we're gonna need. Uh, we're going to need some medium asteroids, and that's going to be whatever the initial asteroids is. The most we can ever have is um, somewhere, didn't I write how they convert? Uh, where did I put that? I could have sworn I just wrote, where's initial? Oh, yeah, here we go. Uh, initial, medium from big. We're just going to go ahead and use the memory. Oh, God, why did I do that? Why do I do that? Um, medium from big. Good. And then the most we could have of the little asteroids, uh, little asteroids, the most we could have with that would be if every medium one, uh, initial, if every medium one, split. So if we went around, this would probably never happen because you'd probably die. Uh, we need little from medium. So if you split all the big ones into medium ones and then split all the medium ones into little ones, you would have that many little asteroids. That makes sense. And then we just need some counts. Uh, medium count. Little count. Okay. Let's generate some of those things. Uh, how are we going to do that? Let's see. Nice stream. When am I remaking Skyrim on stream? Hmm. That's going to come roughly at the same point it came in my career. So like year 13, 14, 15. I figure by that time I'll be fast enough to regenerate uh, Skyrim and that kind of time. All right. So let's, um, let's make some asteroids um, that are... Uh, so we need to say our... Big count when we start out is 
big count is uh, initial count, initial, that's initial asteroids, and our medium medium count is equal to zero, and our little count uh, little count equals also zero. And so we're going to want to put them in a space. Um, let me think of a little bit about how to do that. So we want to make uh, we want to make them into we we'll make them into the game state into the big asteroids, um, big asteroids. We'll put it in there. We want to make initial asteroids amount of them. Um, let's just do that for now, and we will think about more to do with that. All right. Uh, we're gonna what do we call that? Make asteroids. We're gonna do a lot more with that. This is gonna get to be a compl complicated function. Um, make asteroids. So we want them to go into an asteroid pointer um, and we want to make a certain number of them. Um, i is less than count plus plus i. We're going to quickly make this better. Um, what does an asteroid look like? We're going to want to say they've got some velocity and all that stuff. Um, their position, so asteroids i dot position uh, is going to be, let's just make that, um, this is going to be super boring for the moment. Position dot y is equal to zero. Um, we want their initial orientation. That one I think we can actually safely set to be randomly uh, between 0 and 2 pi. Um, and we want to do an initial velocity of and like this. Good. Alright, we will make that more interesting in a minute. Um, so when I reset the game, I should have gotten some asteroids. Oh, of course, now I'm not drawing them. So we need to do we need to actually draw these things of the, let's see, we need it at a point. Asteroids i dot position. We need game state. Asteroids i, not asteroids, big asteroids, big asteroids i dot, uh, there we call it orientation, I hope, and then um, we need the big model, big ass model, and we need the big, uh, we need the big ass model, for count. That looks okay. So in the game, yeah, we got a few up over there in the uh, surrounding the origin. That's obviously not where we're going to want them to be. So let's go ahead and first put them somewhere and then make them move um, a certain amount. We want them to be centered on some position and then probably spread out from that some minimum distance. Uh, let's do a real point, which is the origin for that thing, and then an F32 min distance and an F32 max distance. Um, and we will just go ahead and put that thing uh, let's go ahead and do a real point yeah that'll work. Let's go ahead and say um, we want to create a uh, real point um, which is randomly in yeah okay let's this will work uh, real point offset equals uh, we'll put it randomly in y and then we'll rotate that by some random amount how about that or ro randomly in x doesn't really matter um, min distance max distance um, and we're gonna have uh, 
zero. Good. We're going to do a uh, rotation matrix 2D root. And we're going to do make rotation matrix 2D of that thing, which is just random 32 of uh, 0 0.0f and 2 pi again. Good. And then we're going to, let's say the offset is equal to rotate point um, by this rotation matrix like that. And uh, we'll go ahead and add to that point uh, offset the original place. So we're not modifying that. And then we can just set the position to be that offset. Good. Now, of course, it's going to complain because we haven't uh, did I do this in the wrong order. I did do this in the wrong order. Good. How are we doing on time? Five after five. Okay. Okay, good. Um, it doesn't like that. Okay, I need to look at my... I can't remember my own, uh, my own thing. Do, do, do. Let's see, a current matrix 2D, rotate point. I need a... Uh, I had it right. Like that. Yeah, okay. And I want to add it into here, not like that. Okay. And then the next thing is this thing doesn't take two arguments. So let's go ahead. Uh, well, not there. Real point center, that is just equal to the window size that we're using, and then we're going to scale that thing in place to be half, so that's in the middle, and we want it to be near the center, um, but how big is our ship? Our ship is ship size, um, well we want it to be at least ship size plus the radius away, um, so let's say super size plus um, big ass radius. Um, and then we want it to be, say, no further than ship size plus twice the big ass radius away. How about that? Um, yeah, cool. Okay, looks like they're all around the origin, so I did something wrong here. I sent the center. Duh. Uh, yeah, they're all over there. That seems not right. Um, <laughs> where is that thing? Yeah, make asteroids. Hello, Brett to Origami. Right at the top of my head. Um, I have done asteroids before. Uh, I said did a lot of. I did a bit of practice round. Yes. Um, Normal on Windows now, let's see, nice stream, when are we remaking Skyrim? Do you think it's better to create a technical design document or just launch into code and start experimenting and iterating? Um, I like to work bottom up. Um, you know, I have a good sense of what a game needs. Um, so what I generally do is I think, well, okay, I want to do input, update, render, and that's kind of my, kind of my life. And I just need to figure out what are the things that I need to do in the meantime. So in update for a game like Asteroids, uh, well, okay, I'm going to need to have some Asteroids, I'm going to need to have those things moving around, I'm going to need to move the player around. I sort of kind of think through those things as I'm going. Um, so originally kind of programming this up didn't take much longer. I've added a Spurious Y. Um, yeah, so I don't like that all these things are way out over there. That seems quite wrong. Did I not do the right thing? I'm passing an origin. Um, oh, well, I wanted this. I want to add, yeah, that, that's why. Um, there we go, that's more like it. I uh, maybe want to make them a little further away. Um, and um, let's say, uh, I don't know, like that. That's a little better, it gives me a little space, and then I'm gonna go ahead and increase this range as well. Um, so yeah, I would totally do a technical document if this were more, more complicated than it is. 
Um, I just don't see the point uh, in doing it for something this simple. Um, and it's also not good TV. Um, as far as how, how I learned to do this, Kex, I have been programming for uh, about 34, 35 years. Um, not all that in C++, but I have been programming professionally in C++, I guess, for like 17 in the games industry. Um, so yeah, I'm kind of old, and so this stuff, um, this stuff kind of comes second nature. All right, so let's also give those asteroids we're making um, some initial velocity, uh, let's say, uh, some min velocity and some max velocity and then we're going to need to write an update loop for those things to actually work and we'll actually uh, let's figure that out what do we need to do okay we're giving it some random orientation do I want it to be going in the directions ori oriented I don't think so so let's make another rotation matrix again which is just the random 2 pi we're going to have a um, real point initial velocity, which is going to be some random F32 of min velocity and max velocity, and 0.0f, good, and then we're going to rotate that thing, uh, rotate point, and we'll just set that right in there. Asteroids I velocity equals rotate point of that random velocity we gave it, um, and the rotation velocity, and the rotation like that, not like that. Good, and these are no longer necessary. Um, but we're not going to see anything there. Okay, function does not take five arguments, so let's just give it a little boost. Um, I don't know. Uh, let's say they go kind of not terribly fast because they're big. Good, okay. So we're not going to see any change there, right? They're not going to actually move because we're not updating them yet. Let's do that. Um, I'm going to do the updates all before I do the draws. Let's do asteroids. Um, let's just do all of them as one go as a function. Um, we're going to need to know uh, how much time. And then we'll do something more complicated in there. Update asteroids. We have uh, game state, game state, and then we have some uh, F32 delta T. And I'm going to do something more complicated in here, which is going to be just uh, what's it going to be? I guess we're going to do something a little bit more complicated. Um, we're not going to pass that, we're just going to pass some asteroids, some count, uh, and our delta t. For now, let's just update them according to their velocity. Um, sorry, let me scroll that up a little bit. All right. Maybe I should put my face on that side, because I almost never code in that window. Let's go ahead and edit that scene. Push me way over here um, next to my Twitter handle, right above my Twitter handle. How about that? That's a little bit better. Okay, there we go. I have indeed been programming your whole life. Wow, now I feel old. Um, don't feel bad, don't feel bad about making me feel old. I felt old when I got up this morning. Okay, so let's say uh, the current position, uh, asteroids I position, our real point velocity. Actually, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna use a little calculator, a little calculation value here, velocity. Um, we need to multiply that by the amount of time to, uh, that we're going. I usually use delta t, so I stick with that. <clears throat> we need to add that to our current position. Uh, asteroids i 
dot position, and that should be it. We'll do a little bit more. Um, I asteroid star. Good. Now let's actually do that for each of our guys. Um, update asteroids, uh, the big ones. Um, the number of those. Big asteroid count. Big count is what I wanted. Uh, and delta T. And then let's do it again with the medium ones because we're going to want to split these up here in a moment. So let's go ahead and do that. And good. And we'll do a little bit more in a moment. Um, little asteroids. Little asteroids. A little count. Delta T. Good. So now. Where are we? Now when I generate, are they not, why are they not moving? Do, 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 update asteroids, frame expected time. Um, big, medium, little. Go through, I didn't set their position to be that. Um, I don't even want to do it this way. I just want to do it this way. Uh, that's more like it. All right, now we've got them moving. They are, of course, have the same problem as the player. As soon as they get off screen, we're done. So, what do we want to do? Um, we're going to say, I don't need to know how big they are to do some work there. And I'll show you what I intend to do. Actually, let me tell you what I intend to do. When they get close to their radius, um, medium mass radius, and then the little mass radius, when they get close to their radius to a side, um, we actually want to, um, actually we want to do for that, we don't actually care about that. That We'll do that for drawing, but we don't need that here. Let me just undo all that, that was dumb. I can be dumb. Yeah, technical design doc would have out there, wouldn't it have? All right. Um, we just want to say if asteroids i dot position dot x is less than zero, uh, we are going to need the window size. Uh, window size. And we'll pass that in a second. If it's less than zero, um, plus equal window size dot x, uh, same as we did before. And, you know, I could probably do, I could probably encapsulate this a little bit better. Um, uh, if it's greater than window size, uh, asteroids i dot position dot x minus equal window size dot x. We're going to have to do something else a little fancier. Um, and then we'll do the same thing for y. And asteroids I uh, uh, decide dot y asteroids position dot y minus equals window size dot y close that brace pass that in here window size and we're just gonna pass that to everything and then down here where I should call that, I also want to pass the window size. So now, let's see. When they float off the screen, boop, pops around to the other side because we've got a toroid. Good. Okay. Man, I'm already at 520. I better get my ass in gear, my asteroids in gear. Um, yeah. All right, what I'm going to want to do here, I'm actually going to take this and I'm going to do and draw asteroids in a similar way. Uh, 
just like that. And I'm gonna go ahead and do the draw. Draw asteroids, good. Okay, I'm gonna do that. Um, now, if this thing is kind of near the edge, um, actually, I, I think I will do it this way. Draw asteroid, um, which will just be uh, all the things I need. So it'll be a position, position, it'll be uh, an orientation. That's not a real point. We want orientation like that. Um, we need a model. We need uh, vert count. And we also need to know how big this thing is so we know when we need to draw it off the other side of the screen. You see, here when we kind of are on the edge, rather than have that pop, we'd actually like to draw the asteroid basically on either side of that line um, so that it looks kind of more continuous and not kind of poppy. So let's do that. Um, uh, so first we're going to just straight up draw it. Um, right where we think it is and right as oriented as we think it is. Wow, this, this might be hard to do here in two hours. Let's see if we can do it. I might go an, an extra half hour today. Okay, then if that thing um, is less than radius, I need the window size. If it's less than the radius, then we also want to draw it um, and we want to just draw it on that side of the window. So if we're closer than the radius to the window, that means parts of us are probably sticking over. Um, so we want to draw it at our temp position, orientation, model and vert count. Otherwise, um, if, if the position plus the radius is greater than the window size, I want to do something similar. Um, I have missed something. Why is it tabbing there? That doesn't look good. Well, we'll find it in a minute. I'm missing something here. Temp pause is position. Huh. Weird. Huh. I don't see it. I don't see why that's not aligning over there. Um, oh, but I hate it. Uh, um, right, that's dumb. Missing semicolon. Ah, else if dummy. Sometimes I work in Python, and it's a little bit different, and I forget. Uh, okay, so we want to do the same thing. Uh, it's at position, but temp pause x minus equals window size dot x, and draw a line model. We want to go ahead and draw it at orientation model, vert count. And then we're going to do this all again for, for uh, we're going to do this all again for the y. Good. If y, y plus equal y. Plus, uh, plus y, y, um, y, I'll tell you why. I can't type the letter y. And good. All right. So now we need to draw these things. 
we need to draw them for all the different things we've got. Um, draw an asteroid. Draw an asteroid at game state. I don't know why I'm not just passing that in. James game state big asteroids. Uh, dot position big asteroids. Uh, dot orientation. Um, we're using the big ass model. Big ass big ass model and the game state. Big ass model vert count, um, and we need the big ass radius, and we need the wind size, window size, which we didn't pass in, but which we will. All right, and then this is our real point window. Good. So where I draw asteroids, I need the window size. Uh, I just added a T for no reason. Big ass model count is not a member. That is true. Um, so now in the game, yeah, look how they're smoothly kind of doing the thing that we want them to do. I'm going to go ahead and do the little ones and the medium ones. Uh, space, no, control Q, control F, control F. All right, so now we need the medium count. Medium count. I just had it, and I went right by it. Medium count. So we need the medium asteroids and the medium ass radius and the medium ass model vert count and the medium ass model. And we need the little ones. Little count. Little asteroids. I'll just make sure this all compiles, and then we will do do the shooting, which is what everybody's been waiting for. I'm, I know it. I'm sorry to make you wait for this long. Um, okay, so you shouldn't see any difference there, because we don't have any of those asteroids yet. Good. All right. First of all, let's add some bullets. Now, the original game, I think, had a limit on the number of bullets you could have in the world at any one time. Um, so I'm going to do that as well. I will just go ahead and do bullets, um, and we will make that max some constant, like, I don't know, 12. Um, max bullet count, max bullets, and what do we want that structure to look like? Well, we're going to need to know um, where it is, its, it's uh, velocity. Uh, right, so we need we need a point that it's position. We need a real point that it's velocity. We need what else do we need? Um, well, we probably want to let them only stick around for so long. Uh, that might be all you really need for a bullet. I think that might be all we need. So let's go down here um, and let's let's add a spawn bullet. Good. I'm going to put it here because I'm going to call it inside update player. Um, we only really need the game state because everything we need to know is there on the player. Um, is less than uh, max bullets. Plus plus I. We're going to find a spot in this array where we can fit a bullet. I have, uh, once again, not centered. Oh, it doesn't matter now. Um, if game state bullets i dot lifetime less than equal 0, 0.0 f. Good, that is our man. Let's create a bullet here. We're going to, um, its position is going to be, uh, it's going to be, It's going to be at the nose of the ship. So what do we say that was? It was um, x is 0 0.0 f, and then minus 0 0.5 f times the ship size. Well, let's make sure that works. Um, that's not what I wanted. Uh, position 
Yeah, that's fine. So the ship size constant is above there. So it's going to start there. We're going to uh, create a 2D rotation matrix, uh, make rotation matrix, which is the current player player orientation. And we're going to uh, rotate that point. Uh, rotate the point by that. Good, so you, I'm putting in its nose and I'm moving it and I'm gonna add player's uh, location as well. Player orientation. How fast should bullets go? Um, uh, void, oh, const F32, bullet speed. Uh, let's say those go uh, 25. No, gotta go fast in the ship. Um, I don't know, 300. And we're gonna go ahead and give it a velocity. Again, velocity, velocity. Um, we're going to make that equal to, we shoot along y, I think we said, or minus y, minus y, minus bullet speed, and we're going to, oh, go ahead and set that in, room state, before I forget, bullets i, velocity equals, uh, no, position, equal position, and we're going to rotate, um, the same way we're going to rotate that velocity because bullets don't actually turn or anything like that so we can just kind of sort of figure out with what way they're pointing and make them go that way forever um, let's rotate that point uh, rotate no I want rot and velocity um, and let's go ahead and set that in there I kind of didn't really need to do that Velocity bullets i dot velocity equal to that, and then just to make sure we don't generate a bunch of bullets, let's terminate our loop. Um, when do we spawn a bullet? Whenever, uh, if just whenever you press the button, uh, which is I guess game data and fire, uh, we spawn a bullet and get it moving, um, and then I need to update the bullets. And in a moment, we will actually do their collision detection. You know, it's probably worthwhile compiling, make sure I haven't made a mess. Um, rotate point, uh, position rotate point, can I remember matrix 2D star to real point? Oh, I keep doing this. Rotate point. Take the point before the rotation. I don't like that. I'm probably going to have to change it. Rotate, and then that's going to be the same problem here. Like this. Add point. None of the things to do the stuff. Um, that's because I don't want player orientation. I want the player position. Good. Okay. Um, and now, actually. Oh, I'm not drawing the drawing the things either. Ah, got a bunch of stuff to do. Okay, so let's uh, update the bullets. Game state. Game state, and uh, what do we care? What do I want? Um, I want the delta t. Game state plus plus plus. Uh, game state no. No, I want. Less than max bullets. All right, let me, before I go any further, check the chat. 534. All right, Brick Tube, I'm already talking about uh, I did that one. Let's see what else. Oh, Skyrim, asteroids, seems hard. 35, pick up daughter. Oh, see you later, dad joke. Sorry, I didn't know that. Uh, Would have said goodbye earlier. Easy to learn, it takes many lifetimes to master. This is true. Um, yeah, I also know I don't know a lot, I'll be honest. Um, I learned a lot, awful lot working on big, big games. Um, yeah, crazy. All right, 
Let's update those lifetimes. Um, oh, I need to give this thing. How long do how long do bullets last? I didn't give it a lifetime. Bullet lifetime. Three seconds. Five seconds. Five is fifteen. How about four? Um, and we need to set that in there. Lifetime equals bullet life. Bullet life. It's like thug life. Um, all right. Lifetime uh, minus equals delta t. We care about that because we're going to make them disappear. Um, I'm just going to update them all. Uh, I need velocity to be equal to. Even if they're not shown, it's a little bit of extra math, kind of not necessary, but eh, you know, computers are fast. They weren't fast then, probably actually had to care. Um, we need to scale that thing by the delta t, and then we need to add to point state bullets i. Um, uh, we want to add into the position that velocity. And we are done. And then let's go down here where we do drawing stuff. And we'll just make these things a square of like a few pixels on a side. Bullets. Oh, we're going to need to update their position as well if they go off the side. Um, that is fine. That will be easy. Uh, we don't care. Game state, sorry, game state. And in a moment, I will make all this stuff work. We are already going to be spawning bullets. They're just never going to go away. Um, let's just go through them. I is less than max bullets. Plus plus I. If game state bullets I lifetime lifetime is greater than zero, we're actually going to draw one there. Let's just do. Um, I'm going to go ahead and bring in, where is that? I used some drawing code last time that is available to you on the net at my website. I'm just going to draw a rectangle. Um, I need a point from real point. Uh, I need a point, which is the position of the thing, which is a point from real point, name state, bullets i dot position. Good. And I need to actually draw, let's see. Um, I'm going to subtract a little bit from that. Minus equal, we'll just make them 5 by 5, I guess. Minus equal to, and we're going to draw a rectangle, point dims equal 5, like that. We draw a rectangle at the position with the dimensions, and we'll make that white. All right, now let's go ahead and update those bullets. Update bullets. Game state. Game data frame expected time. Good. And then uh, let's just draw bullets. Let's see. Let's see. I did a lot of code there. That's almost certainly not going to work. Or maybe it will. Just totally worked. Oh. All right. They will live too long because it's not any fun to not be able to see them. Also, they go off the screen. And they're not colliding with anything. Yeah, we'll leave them how long they're living because it might not matter. Um, we update them. Let's make them not go off the screen. Hit my caps lock. All right. Uh, oh, I forgot my window size thing. Uh, oh. You will see me 
go and put all that through there again. Good. This is just dealing with if they go off the screen. I'm not going to worry since they're so small about drawing them more than once if they are that close. Uh, bullets, position, why? Uh, if it's greater than window size, that why? Anybody I know in real life here on the stream tonight? Shout out! I'll give you a hello. Minus equal window size out y, and I just need to pass that thing in. Uh, that's a real point. Window size, and when I update that thing, I need to pass that in. And now, they should come around just like good. They do probably last a little bit too long. Okay, last bit. This is it. Let's do collide the bullets. Um, basically, if a bullet is inside the radius of a thing, we're going to call it good. Um, and we will generate some new asteroids. I've got, I've got 19 minutes. I can do this in 19 minutes. All right. Good. Uh, I is less than max bullets. Plus, plus I. Where will the source be on my site again? It's currently in WednesdayWorkout.html uh, at brettduville.com, WednesdayWorkout.html. I will try to remember and put up the source uh, from this afterwards, and then you can take it from there if you like want to. I'm not going to get to scoring tonight, but if you want to add scoring, you take it from wherever. This is all fine. Um, you can't actually release an Asteroids clown without Atari coming after you, so I'm not going to worry too much about that. Um, 32. Let's actually use B for bullet. Um, and we only need to do this um, for bullets that are live. Uh, Bullets.lifetime is greater than 0 0.0f. Good. I'm going to go ahead and go ahead and close off all my braces just to get that done. All right. Now we're going to go through our asteroids. Uh, I is less than big asteroid, uh, game state, big asteroid, count, big count, um, do I want to increment I? No, I'm not going to do that. Hmm, okay. All right, so I just thought this through a little bit. Um, I'm going to actually want to go through all the bullets, um, but these bullets are going to die uh, if they hit stuff. So if they hit a big asteroid, I don't want them to collide with a smaller asteroid, right? Um, and you'll see how that's going to work. So basically, I want to I uh, want to set my I medium um, and my I little iterators before I do this. Uh, that will make sense in a moment. And I will iterate no matter what. OK. Because um, basically what's going to happen is if I collide with an asteroid, I'm going to create some new asteroids, which is good. Um, and then I don't want that bullet to collide with anything else. So I'm going to set those medium and little to be the, the counts. Um, all right, so what we're going we're gonna to use the fact that these are mostly circular to our advantage. Um, I have in here. Distance square between points, yeah. Um, I'm going to do distance squared. Uh, actually, I don't even need that. I'm going to say if the distance squared between these points, which is uh, this bullet's location, bullet's i dot position, and uh, the bullets, uh, it's I big, no, it's I, it's B, B for bullet. Um, I'm going to use the big asteroids, big 
asteroids. Uh, I big. All right, so if the dis distance squared between those is less than the big ass radius squared, that means we have hit it. So we need to make us not check this bullet against any others. Medium count, name state, little count, good. Um, we need to destroy this asteroid um, and generate some new asteroids in its place. So we're going to do generate asteroids. Let's see. What did I call that? We're going to, we're going to make some asteroids there. Um, let's just copy that in there. This is kind of the meat of the game right here. All right. We're going to make some asteroids. We're going to make them at our current medium asteroids plus however many um, medium asteroids we already have. Um, so we're going to basically stick them on the end, uh, these asteroid things. Uh, initial asteroids. So now we're going to do, we're going to create um, however many come from a big uh, asteroid. So when you generate a medium, you create a certain number of small ones. We're going to generate them, let's say, at the position that this asteroid is at, um, uh, that position, and then these are the sort of how far, and then we're going to do how fast. So we're going to take um, uh, how far, we're going to say they are somewhere from zero to the radius of the thing. Uh, let's say the big ass radius. And then we need to make them go a certain speed. Um, let's make them go a little faster than the big ones go. Um, and we need to get rid of this big asteroid. So how do we do that? We take um, take one from the end. Uh, we're going to make the big asteroids um, currently at i big equal to the game state, the big asteroid that is at the end of our list, um, uh, 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 which is a game state, big count minus one. We know we have at least one because we're in here, uh, so we can subtract that safely. But now we're going to actually say we have one fewer, um, one fewer big asteroids. Okay. Let's see what happens. Alright, I'm in the middle of stuff. Oh, they blew away and then I didn't... Hmm. Oh! Uh, I didn't add those asteroids in. Uh, the new ones in. All right, probably need to reset to do that. Good. Um, and I need to also set my asteroid, uh, my bullet lifetime to zero. Um state bullets B lifetime is zero. So it doesn't go and kill asteroids on the other side. Let's try that. Good. Uh, it's not hitting the medium ones. That's because I haven't written that logic yet. All right. So next. Um, so if we get here and and uh, and I medium um, is less than I medium count. In fact, I want to do this here later. Uh, I want to do this last because I don't actually uh, want to test these things. Um, I want to make sure that it's the new medium count. And this is really just the same code. So I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm just going to change all the bigs to mediums. Uh, control Q. Good. All right, so the distance between points is 
Um, we're now looking at a medium asteroid at I medium position, and let's see if it's less than medium mass radius. Um, we need to make some asteroids in the little asteroid space of our memory. Little count, little count. Um, medium for big, so now we're making however many we make when we make uh, roll for medium, and we're going to do this um, at the location. Is it medium asteroids? I think it's med asteroids. Um, at the position of the one we just destroyed, we're going to put them in the same sort of space, and let's make them go even faster. Good. We know we're adding some now to the little count. And uh, we're going to swap this one with the one at the end. High medium is equal to medium count. Um, except we don't want the big asteroids. We want the medium asteroids. And we want to make their less, one less of those. We set the lifetime. We don't care about this anymore. Um, actually, we do. And we kind of want to do that here, too. Um, so we don't look at any more of those. So now we should be able to uh, a little from big. It's a little from medium. Good. So now we should be able to destroy the medium ones. All right, good, and there's some small ones going off in their random directions. Almost done. Um, and then we just want to do this again. Except this time we don't even generate. Uh, oh, I keep doing that. I keep going to control C, control V, but that is not actually um, control Q, control F, good. All right, and now we'll go ahead and do the little ones. I did use I little. Okay, we care about where the little asteroids are. And we care about the little radius. All right, I've got eight minutes. Um, little asteroids. We're not going to make any asteroids because these are little ones. Let's cut that right out. Um, we're not going to create any more. All right, we're going to swap the little asteroid to the end. Little asteroids. My little is swapped with the little asteroid that's on the end. Uh, we are almost there. Little count. We're going to make there one less of those. Set the bullet to be zero. We don't care about that anymore. Good, now we should be able to kill those too. Um, oh, I'm floating around. Ah. The only thing left to do really is collide the player. Good, now we can destroy those. So effectively now we have asteroids. Um, we can destroy asteroids, create the smaller versions of them. Um, I don't like those, I want kind of chunkier ones. Um, good, good, and we can move around, Woo! wow, yeah, the physics is, he's right, the acceleration is a little high, um, I'm going to turn that down, because, ugh, um, that's way too high. Rule of thumb in game development, have values and double values to, to uh, tweak them. Probably could make my turn rate a little higher. Wow, there's a lot of asteroids in this field. Okay. Um, all right, let's collide the player. Um, what do you got? Six minutes? We can collide the player. And I guess we'll just call you dead and the game over if you collide once for now. Um, I will put this code up and people want to add stuff. Totally do. Collide player. which is basically a very similar thing that we did before. Um, I guess we'll do uh, 
Uh, we'll do a num lives left, and we will set that. Um, I'll make it player lives left, like that. And we will only draw the player if he exists. If game state player lives left, we will only draw him if he exists, and we will continue to draw his bullets. Um, we will only update him if he continues. Whoops, game state player lives left. And what else? I guess I guess we don't. Do we need to care? I guess we don't want to collide him um, if he is not there. Okay, good. Collide the player. All right, let's do the collide the player. Collide player. Game state. Game state. Um, except that's not my structure. Let's see if anybody has something they want to ask. Where will this be on the site? I think I already answered that. I'll just post it uh, up there. And this is going to be this is going to be it. Uh, let's see. Um, we need to take the player's position. We need to basically do what we did to draw him. Draw line model. Where's the draw line model? I'm just going to copy that code. This here. Yeah, I think I'm going to steal that. Cloud player. All right, we only need to make that thing once. Oops. We'll need to make the rotation matrix once, and that's going to be on the player's orientation. Player orientation. We're going to we're going to transform that point. Uh, and we're going to use the i index, and this is game state. So I'm just rotating, uh, I'm just putting the corners of the model into, into, um, into the real place that it is in the world. And I'm going to now, uh, if distance squared between points, I need, this, I need to do this for all of these. I need to actually do something very similar that, um, except I don't want that, uh, like this, if the corner and the asteroids, um, I big, that's big asteroids, Big asteroids uh, position equals less than uh, big ass radius times big ass radius. Then the player dies. You know what? We don't even care. I'm not even going to worry about doing the sort of shortcut logic that I did before. Because it doesn't matter. We can test him a bunch of times. He can die a bunch of times. Um, do, do, do. We'll just do it for each of them. And then we will be done. I'm just going to use um, A, A. Hey, hey, we're now looking at the medium asteroids and the medium radius. 
medium radius, he does. And we'll go ahead and go A again. Um, oops. And a little count. And A. All right. And use A and the little radius. All right. We are right at two hours, and I've just added the player dying. If the player dies, game state, player, uh, what is it, num player, num player lives, num player, player lives left is subtract by one. I think we're done. Uh, oh, I need the model to be the player model. Game state player. Big player model. And I have an iBig somewhere here. Good, right at two hours. Um, we have uh, we have to do what? What do we have to do here? Uh, we have to say he starts uh, player lives left is one. So now he can shoot stuff, and oh, he clips a little bit into things because um, hmm, I use the big ass radius for the small asteroids, I guess. Little ass radius. Um, all right. Ah, so if any corner of him touches, uh, yeah. So there we go. We have done asteroids as as planned. Um, a lot of balancing you could do at this point. Certainly you could add a score if you wanted to go and actually add um, all that. Uh, you could do that. I'll put the source up so you can just use what I've got here uh, to start, you know, to learn more about how Asteroids is built. Um, but that's going to do it for me. Um, glad you enjoyed it, Winning Code. Um, I am going to stream every Wednesday. Next week I think we're going to do uh, Breakout. I think we're going to do Breakout next week. Um, it'll either be Breakout or Space Invaders. I haven't decided which, so we shall see. But that's going to do it for me, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks so much for joining me, um, and I will see you next Wednesday for our Wednesday workout. Cheers. <laughs>